Good morning, viewers. Welcome to the session devotionals for this morning. Topic for this morning: the danger of abusing grace. Topic one more time: the danger of abusing grace. Host my humble self, Luke Kefas. Text taken from the book of Malachi, chapter two, from verse two down to three. But let's pray before we. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the praise and anointings. We count you a great privilege to be alive this morning. We come to hear your word, Father. We are speak to us and grant us understanding. Said in Psalm 65, verse 4, blesses the man who that call us and chooses to approach unto you, that we dwell in your cause, and that we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. This morning, let us be satisfied with the goodness of your word. For in Jesus' name we pray. Topic one more time The danger of abusing grace. Host, my humble self, Luke Kephas, text taken in the book of Malachi 2, 2, 2, 3. I read from verse 2. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already, because ye not laid it to heart. Verse 3. Behold, I will corrupt your seed, and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. Someone will say, God forbid to this. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. For that reading, Second Chronicles chapter 26 from verse 1 to 23. I'll skip some verses. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. Verse 3 said, 16 years old was Uzziah, when he began to reign, and he reigned 15 and 2 years in Jerusalem, his mother's name, Jecolia. Verse 4 said, And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. Verse 7, And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwell in Gubia and Mahomes. Verse 9 said, Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and all the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Verse 14, And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the whole shields, spears, helmets, harpagons, poles, slings to cast stones, and he made engines, and he made in Jerusalem engines in verse 15 invent, invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bookworks. Let's move down to verse 16. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went to the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar. And that was how he was caught with leprosy. You can read all of that down to verse 23. John chapter 1 from verse 1, John chapter 1, 16 to 17 said, And of his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. In verse 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 7 said, For who make thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou did not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? As if thou hast not received. May the Lord bless his word and grant us understanding in Jesus' name. Topic one more time the danger of abusing grace. Host my humble self, Luke Kefas, text taken from the book of Malachi chapter 2, chapter 2, down to 3. We further read in 1 Corinthians chapter 26, from verse 1 to 23, John chapter 1, from verse 16 to 17, and lastly, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Please, at your leisure time, can read the scriptures again, I'm sure you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Thinking cap. A mind blowing word for this morning is. Those who take grace for granted are naturally grounded in life. Take that again. Those who take grace for granted are naturally grounded in life. Think about this. Today we look at a topic, the danger of abusing grace. We shall be as a large teaching for the month of November. And I'm sure you'll be blessed today in Jesus' name. By introduction, let's understand that the excesses of life are bound to come from men. But among the ills to avoid is the effect and the consequences of pride before God. Lack of acknowledging God in everything is pure pride and taking grace for granted. The king Nebuchadnezzar took God for granted and he was translated to an animal for seven years. Those who took grace for granted take God for granted as well. And those who take God for granted are naturally grounded in life. But I pray, as you are being cautioned this morning, you will never take God nor grace for granted in Jesus' name. Daniel chapter 4 from verse 28 down to 37 and it came upon King Nebuchadnezzar and all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months he walked in the place in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon in verse 30. The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might, by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in his mouth, in verse 31, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee is this spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, 
and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour, verse 33, was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did eat ox, and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his ears was grown like, like eagles, feathers, and his nails like birds' cloud. You can complete that down to verse 37. But the summary was that he was in the wilderness for seven years, eating and whining with the beast, until he came to his senses. Look at what he now said, down to verse 36 said, at the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, and my brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his way is judgment, and those that walk in pride is able to abase. That's the testimony coming from the greatest proud man talking about Nebuchadnezzar. He was reduced to an animal for seven good years, and he has affirmed that God indeed reigned in the affairs of all kingdom of men. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11 says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. But I pray we will not follow victim like Nebuchadnezzar in Jesus' name. Let's look at the consequences or the effect of abusing grace. We we'll look at just five bullet points. The consequences of what? Abusing the grace of God. The consequences of abusing grace. We're looking at the first that is stagnation. Uh, Daniel chapter 4 from verse 28 down to 37. You can see the account of Nebuchadnezzar there. And of course Luke chapter 17 from verse 11 down to 19. Ten leper, Jesus came into a city. Ten leper met him and cried for him to heal them. And he healed them. They went. One, when he saw that he was healed, you he could see some changes in his lep leprous hand. Ten back and came to glorify Jesus. And Jesus said, Where are the remaining nine? Was it not ten that was cleansed? And he told that one that returned, Go and be made whole. Go and show yourself to the priest. And that's how he left. And he was perfectly made whole. While the remaining nine remained stagnated at only a little bit. Of healing that they got. We saw Nebuchadnezzar being held in stagnation for seven years. He was, he was in the wilderness with the animals. So the consequences of abusing the grace of God is what stagnation. And I pray you and I will avoid stagnation in Jesus' name. Another point, anxiety and lack of peace. One of the consequences of abusing the grace of God is anxiety and lack of peace. Second Chronicles uh, chapter 15 from verse three down to six said now for a long season israel have been without the true god and without the teaching priest and without law verse four said but when they in their trouble did turn unto the lord of israel and sought him he was found of them and in those times there was no peace to him that went out nor to him that came in but great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the countries and the nation was destroyed of nations and city of city for God did vex them with all adversity. Philippians chapter 4 from verse 4 to 7 said, Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. In verse 5 said, The Lord is at hand. Verse 6 said, Be careful for nothing. Another translation said, Be anxious for nothing. He said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. And the peace of God which passes your understanding shall dwell in your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. So, another consequence of abusing the grace of God is anxiety and lack of peace. So, if you don't want to be a victim of anxiety and lack of peace, then give God all the glory for every good thing you've seen in your life. Another point is destructions and shame. The consequence of abusing the grace of God is what destruction and shame and shame Ezekiel chapter 30 verse 6 said they said the Lord they also that uphold Egypt shall fall and the pride of our power shall come down from the tower of sin shall they fall in it by the sword said the Lord Second Chronicles 26 from verse 1 down to 23 carry the account of Uzziah at the age of 16 he ascended the throne in the room of his father he did raptures uh, he did right in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord helped him. He was the first man to build engines in the old. He built engines, he built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate in verse 9. 
said he fortified them. He prepared uh, shields, spears, helmets, and all that. He made engines in Jerusalem and all of that. Verse 16 said, But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple to burn incense. And as I leprosy caught him, and he died at a tender age. I pray you and I will not be victim of anxiety, lack of peace, will not be victim of destruction and shame in Jesus' name. Let's look at another point lack and want. The consequence of our business, the grace of God, is what? Lack and want. Uh, Malachi chapter 4 from verse 1 down to 2 said, If we will not lay to her to give him all the glory, he will cause our blessings. He said, If you will not lay to her to lay to her to give glory unto my name, said the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse unto you and I will cause your blessings. Yea, I have caused them already because ye have not laid to her. He said, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your face. Somebody say, God forbid, that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And don't forget, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 down to uh, 13 mentioning all the blessings if we obey God and from 13 down to 40 to be about mentioning all the causes if we don't obey the Lord and lack and want is so much to mention there but I pray you and I will not be victim of lack and want in Jesus name let's look at the last point the consequence of abusing the grace of God the last point is sicknesses and death sickness disease and death we will not be victim of sickness disease nor death in Jesus name Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 said pride goes of course before a destruction we all know that of course actually apostle chapter 5 proverbs 16 18 pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall but i pray you will not fall in jesus name actually apostle chapter 5 from verse 1 down to 11 remember the story of ananias and his wife Sapphira. of course they sold a piece of land said but a certain man named ananias and Sapphira, his wife sold a possession a possession and kept back part of the prize his wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostle feet and peter said and i asked why have set and filled thy heart to lie to the holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land well said so why did it remain was it not dying and thou sold it and why do you now keep half of the money and all that at the end of the day we saw that Anias lied to the holy ghost and there and then as peter spoke he fell down and died and the wife came and Peter asked her the same question. She lied as well. And she died. They were destroyed. Why? Because they abused the grace of God in their life. It was grace that gave them the land in the first place. And of course, no one put pressure on them to sell it. They choose on their own to sell it. They thought they could joke around lying to God and lying to the Holy Ghost. And as they lost their life, I pray you will not be a victim of any of this in Jesus' name. One more time, we're looking at the consequences of abusing the grace of God. And we saw stagnation. We saw stagnation. Uh, Daniel chapter 4, 28 to 37. You can read that Luke 17, 11 to 19. We saw another point anxiety and lack of peace. You can read 2 Chronicles chapter 15, 3 to 6. Philippians 4, 4 to 7. We saw another point destruction and shame. Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 6. Daniel chapter 4, 28 to 37. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. The whole of that chapter. We saw another point lack and want. Malachi chapter 4, 1 and 2 to 28. From verse 14 down to 42. So another point sickness, diseases, and death. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18, and Acts of chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. Please, at your leisure time, read all of those Bible passages. I'm sure God will speak to you through them in Jesus' name. Lastly, let's understand that the consequences of taking the grace of God for granted is devastating. In fact, in most cases, the victims don't come out of it. Beloved, the singular cure for taking grace for granted is gratitude, praise, and worship to God as a lifestyle. Samson took grace of God for granted, and he got grounded. At a very young age, he went to play around with prostitute. He went into the lila, and that was how he lost his life. Beloved, if only we can kill pride and arrogance, we would definitely kill taking grace for granted in our life. Walking in gratefulness, in gratitude before God, is only possible in Christ Jesus. As such, I call you to accept Jesus in truth and in spirit, and to confess Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. So you can be baptized with the spirit of humility, so you can be baptized with the spirit of praise, the spirit of worship, the spirit of gratitude before God and before men. So you'll be lifted. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 26 from verse 1, the whole of that chapter, you can read the account of Uzziah, great man, mighty man, the first man to invent what was called engines. Imagine the old, old, old testament, about some centuries back, he, out of creativity, he even uh, created engines 
but that same man died of leprosy. Why? Because he took the grace of God for granted. He wanted to enter into the shoes of a priest. He never knew he was just a king. He was not a priest. And as a leprosy caught him while he went to when when he went to burn incense in the temple, even so many priests gathered to withstood him. But he what he cleared everyone and went to burn incense and he died there. Father, uh, Malachi four one to two. For behold the day comment that that thou shalt born as an oven. I take that again. For behold the day comment that shall born as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that are do wickedly shall be stumbled. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the staff. Philippians chapter two, five to nine. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be called with God. He said in verse seven, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being formed in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God highly exalted him, giving him a name that is above every other name. John 3, 1 to 5, 3 said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do you want to see glory in your life? Do you want to see new rising in your life? Then accept Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. So you be baptized with grace to praise and have Appreciate God for every good thing you've seen in your life. So you can appreciate God for the good health, for the life you've enjoyed, and never to abuse grace. I want to pray with you if you're interested. Placing on your chest, bow your head and repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. I know you come to this earth for my sake. You died on the third day of for my freedom. Right now, I confess you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. Have mercy for me, Jesus. Wash me with your blood and write me in the book of life. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Congratulations to you if you pray that prayer. Please look for any Bible believing church around and be attending. And God bless you in Jesus' name. We take two prayers. First prayer, Father, help me never to abuse grace and God in my life and set me free from every form of causes in my life and destiny in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 7 said, For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. Join me, let's take this prayer. Father, help me never to abuse grace and God in my life and set me free from every form of causes that meet out to in in my life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Father, help me never to abuse your grace, never to abuse you in my life, and set me free from every form of causes that is driving in my life and destiny. For in Jesus' name I pray. Last prayer, Father, teach the saints across the globe never to take grace and God for granted so they won't end grounded in life in Jesus' name. Proverbs 16 18 said, Pride goes before a fall and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Father, teach the saints across the globe never to take your grace, never to take you for granted. For so they won't end grounded in life in the name of Jesus. Father, teach the saints across the globe never to take grace and God for granted so they won't end grounded in life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Join me pray this prayer, share this gospel, and be blessed from intercession ministry. God blesses you tomorrow. Uh, as we enter into a brand new month, I pray that this new month will be a month of new beginning, to be a month of dancing all through. Even today, you hear good news. There shall be no carryover. All the blessings of God are packaged for you. You will meet them. Even today, Jesus' name. God bless you. See you tomorrow.